Hello, and welcome to my spoken word channel. My name is Stephen Lackey, but like any other label, that name is simply a collection of letters that make sounds to convey meaning, a meaning which may have varying connotations for those who voice and or hear it. The spoken word is much the same, its effect ranging from dissonance to resonance, apathy to revulsion, sometimes even to the same person, over time. I'll be reading some of my own work today, offering analysis of its meter, rhyme scheme, and content. If you find it appealing, heartening, or evocative, or even not worth remembering, please consider the aforementioned variability of response. Words, much the same as attitudes, friendships, and even the air we breathe, may teach us, transform us, or pass uninspiringly in this moment, but the next is yet to be defined. Herein are my copyrighted works, all rights reserved, but please forget the name and remember the message. Also feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Today's piece is called Booth. To market, I'm briskly traveling. I've got to walk through vendor booth where people stroll and talk down to me in the way they always do. They purchase after browsing, or they treat only their eyes, which always seem to turn at last to dwell on me, surmising, are all of these yours? They were, I'll say, again, as ever someone seems to ask, as though they couldn't have been. Well-worn in places, scuffed and stained, both merchandise and I. But collectors and collective gestures can't seem to pass by without stopping at the booth to make a joke or shed a tear, but always with a sense of wonder, awe, and memory. Each Saturday and Sunday morning, beans and eggs and green tea nosh, then pop around the corner, see what fancies might be bought. The walk will do me good, the sun, the birds, the grass, the air, up third, left spruce, and then the market bustling, looming there. It's better in than out, perhaps, that's an allegory to spare. I grow weary of the day's passing. At times, I melt into my chair. Home or market, neither safe. I fight off specters of my past as I watch them play in dreamy films or traipse away in mylar wraps from shopping at the booth to make them jokes, to shed like tears, but always with a sense of wonder, awe, and memory. This week was quiet, strangely. Papers, neighbors, gardening, mail. My parents didn't manage visits. Bits of them are turning frail. The one dependable, my rock, is on its way to me once more, with different faces, fashions, fluffy pets dragged through an obstacle course to arrive with spare change, hopefully, as I wouldn't want to take the place of bills or medicine with trinkets from my booth or another in any case. Thoughts like that seem strange to a child who owns the toys that tagged surround me, but he's not the one who rings them out, not anymore. But I imagine in their playrooms those others may have somehow found me when shopping at the booth, together making jokes and sharing tears, always with a sense of wonder, awe, and memory. This is an arrhythmic piece rhyming on lines two and four of each stanza, but for the last, with a refrain repeating with slight alterations every four stanzas. I was thinking back on all of the flea markets and toy shows I've attended, so many booths loosely guarded by portly older gentlemen. I know that the mint in the box toys are sold by collectors or resellers, but you come across a few selling used or lightly used or all pieces included open box. I know that these could just as well be estate resale or goodwill hunters for an eye, with an eye for hidden gems, but what if there was one who sold his own? What if there was an elder who as a child valued his toys so much as to thoroughly enjoy, but never part with them? What if he'd never had grandchildren of his own yet still saw a chance to pass them down? He could donate them, certainly, but that would deny him the chance at mostly forced conversation, punctuated heroically by gleeful smiles of discovery spreading across youthful faces, topped only by those of rediscovery on the well-worn. In seeing all of the enthralled aficionados, he imagined them having played with him in retrospect, somehow finding his spirit in their playtime. 
In this, his loneliness finally speaks to us, raised in a room full of toys but no one to play with, no siblings or even friends, perhaps, imagining them now as then. Thank you for joining me today. I hope it has been some mix of enlightening, entertaining, and thought-provoking, and if not, well, perhaps another time. You could have spent it any number of ways, but I sincerely appreciate that you've chosen to spend this time listening to phrases I have turned. I'd like to hear your thoughts as well. Drop a comment below regarding what your own or someone else's creative writing and or spoken word has meant to you. Also, subscribe to my channel if you like. I'm not sure how often I'll be posting, but if you click the notification bell, you'll be among the first to know when I do. Please also consider this. There are moments of aloneness we must all traverse, but imagination always gets us through. It flexes and rebounds and tides us over. The important thing is to find purpose, to make meaning even when all seems contrived. Make your time mean something to you or someone else or both. Start today. Embody the strength. Find a voice. Be heard.